I'm here, busily, trying to absorb all of this stuff and the layers and the names and get it all right in my head. And I'm conscious that, as usual, I'm getting overwhelmed with having to keep track of it all. Yeah. And not so long ago I thought, this is ridiculous. Um, it must, it has, it's easier than this, I know it. And um, I should just make the most of any emotion that I'm feeling and feel it and don't even think so, about it. So what's it. the emotion you're feeling right now? Oh, I'm a bit frightened now. You're overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, yes. That was the emotion you were feeling. Yeah, I'm often like that. But so, so you're overwhelmed because there's all these messages coming at your head, and you're so used to using your head to sort everything out. Yeah. And um, but there's this feeling inside of you now building as I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I'm not getting this. I don't understand. So you're trying to understand it intellectually, but the emotion inside of you is I don't understand. So, so allow yourself to feel that. Allow yourself to just start sinking into, I give up. I don't understand what in the hell is going on. But, and let yourself feel that emotion. Because when you feel that emotion, all of a sudden you'll have some clarity in your head. And you'll be able to also get things there. Does that make sense? Yeah, I'm aware of that. Yep. Done that. <laughs> no, you haven't. Or maybe I haven't. Okay, no. but that wasn't really my question. I know, there? I know. So keep going. Um, what, what I've been doing lately, and you said something before that I wondered if you could clarify. What I've been doing lately is if I feel something, I just think, oh, I'll just feel it. I won't try and work it out. Yeah. Um, so I feel sad, and I feel sad, and it's nice feeling sad actually, because when I'm sad, God is very close to me. Exactly. Um, but then before you said something about sadness and anger, and I thought, am I not allowed to feel sad? Because I know that. I must have a lot of anger. I'm learning that I must have a lot of anger. So does that mean feeling sad is avoiding something? No, no. See, now you're trying to get back into your mind again. What you're yeah. doing is right. The message you're saying to yourself is, I'm sad, I don't know what it's about, I'm allowed to feel it, so I feel it. That's good. And if you're sad and you're not crying, though, then obviously there's a deeper layer you could go to in the sadness. Does that make sense? So ask, the only thing I do, there's only one question I ask myself and that is, what am I afraid of? I always just ask myself that question, what am I afraid of? Because it's always something I'm afraid of that stops me from going deeper. When you're sad, you ask yourself what you're afraid of. Whatever, when I'm sad but not crying. There's crying and crying. It's like... <laughs> uh, if I'm not wholeheartedly sobbing my eyes out like, and other people do, yep. is that worthless? No, it's not worthless, but there is a fear. Do, do you see the relationship? Look, none, nothing you do to help you access your emotion is worthless, so don't believe that. Everything you do to access an emotion is, is worth something. But if I am not sobbing my heart out when I'm sad, then I am not fully yet into the emotion. And there's a reason why, and that is I'm afraid of something. So that's why I keep asking myself, if, I'm not, if I know I'm not in the deepest of the emotion, I just ask myself, what am I afraid of? And I talk to God about that. What I, I say to God what I'm afraid of. I'm afraid that you'll you know, do this, or they'll do that, or I'm afraid that this will happen, I'm afraid. And I just talk about that. So I might be just having a few tears, but not yet into the real deep emotion of it. And, and I just ask myself, what am I afraid of? And I start, but I don't even, now I just say to God, I start just talking to God, what am I afraid of? About going deeper into this emotion. Because unless you are right in the emotion, there is something you're afraid of that's still stopping you from fully feeling the emotion. So there's two things I can do when I'm crying a little bit. One is ask what I'm afraid of. What I've always done is said, okay, God, here I am, you can hear me now. Can you help me on a bit? So yep. Is there a whole lot of things you can do? No, no, that's all you need. That's all you need to do because in that moment, you things will start popping into your mind what you're afraid of, and if you just talk to them, talk them back to God, like this is what I'm afraid. Ah, oh, this is what I'm afraid of. When I was a kid, this happened. You know, you start saying things, you'll actually start connecting more to the grief that's underneath the fear when you start expressing the fear. Does that make sense? Like, so it's always a fear. Like it's not what I'm sad about. It's what I'm afraid of. And. 
No, because it, because if you were fully sad about that thing, you would be fully feeling the sadness and you'll be in a sobbing state. Does that make sense? So there's always a fear sort of capping that. And it's the same with all of our emotions in the end. If we're not fully experiencing the emotion just like a child would experience it. So, you know, you take a lolly off a child and the child is just heartbroken, right? <laughs> you imagine a two-year-old and it's there sucking on a lolly and you grab the lolly out of its mouth and take it away. What happens to the two-year-old? Oh, if they do a tantrum and then what do they get into? Sobbing on the floor like this at the end of the world, right? Just because of a lolly being taken off them, right? So, so in the end, we will be like that with regard to the emotion. We will be, if we're in grief, we'll be in grief, like sobbing our heart out, and we'll feel it exiting us. We'll just feel this powerful emotion of grief just overwhelming us completely. If I'm not yet at that level of processing the emotion, then there is still a fear preventing the emotion from fully flowing through me. And the fear might be afraid of judgment of others. It might be afraid of an ex or neighbour hearing me. It might be, you know, it could be anything, just even simple like that, that your next door neighbours... Like, while I was processing a lot of my grief, my next door neighbour's home was two metres away from my bedroom. Now, of course, they heard everything I was doing. I could hear everything they were doing in their bedroom. <laughs> so they certainly heard everything I was doing in mine, right? And so, so, you know, that was one of the fears that I had to allow myself to work through, that it didn't matter, you know, it didn't matter if they were going to even come and knock on the door. I had to work through that fear. And when I worked through that fear, I could more fully get into that emotion, that, that causal emotion. So yes, unless you're fully experiencing the emotion as it is in its raw state, there will be a fear stopping the full experience. Allow yourself to look at the fear and ask yourself about the fear and ask God about the fear because Processing the fear is about part of processing the emotion. It's about this process of clearing everything out of you, including every fear you have will leave you as well. Does that, that make sense? So just those two things there and nothing else. You don't need to do anything else. It's really, that's why it's so simple. You don't have to work it all out, you know? Yeah.